Um, the first thing I'd like to bring up is that uh, our technology. Our technology, uh, being that it's gotten obviously way more advanced, the injuries that we used to find as uh, back uh, as early as 30 years ago, uh, it was about rest. You know, when you had an arm problem, you sought rest. I mean, when you were sore, uh, you worked through things. When things hurt, you gave it rest. Now, uh, with the way that our surgery and, and how uh, uh, advanced it is, where you can go in there with a microscope or go in there and x-ray and, you know, with a, a tiny incision, go in and repair uh, these injuries, uh, injuries have gone up because of technology and because we diagnose uh, slight tears and, and take care of them before they become bigger problems. So uh, going uh, to 700 percent in 10 years, that's not the only thing. I mean, obviously it has to, you have to equate that into part of the reason why uh, it does, it is so high. The next thing is uh, you know, the uh, aspect of uh, weightlifting. You know, this uh, past uh, year, I was fortunate enough uh, here to uh, speak at uh, our national convention, and uh, what an honor, you know, that is to do so. But one of my topics was, is weightlifting bad for pitching? Well, the reason that came about, because for the, you know, last, I mean, as a pitching coach that, that, that uh, you know, that enjoys interacting, uh, you get that question a lot, you know, well, what, what weightlifting is it bad for? No matter what program, weightlifting will benefit you uh, in, the, in the way that it uh, is required. Uh, strength is a key factor to success. And if strength wasn't uh, important, then steroids wouldn't have been the issue that it was in Major League Baseball. So strength you know, when you think of steroids, steroids gets you strong rather quickly. And it gets you very strong. Um, strength needs to be addressed at an earlier age and it needs to become a discipline, something that you do uh, from a, a starting point to uh, an, an end point. And truly there is no end point to how strong we can uh, become. Um, if you believe that, then it could be why uh, you haven't achieved uh, the success, your own personal success. Uh, limitations do just that, they limit you. But weightlifting needs to be done in a balanced format. I mean, if you're going to push, you need to pull. Uh, you sitting there watching this videotape, uh, your body has assumed a balanced position meaning that your muscles, to assume the position that you are in, half your muscles are on and half of them are off. Uh, if you are very uncomfortable in your seating situation, then you're probably using more uh, muscles than are required and, 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 and a great deal are off, or vice versa. There has to be a balance there. So with lifting, you need that uh, balance. So to simply say that you, you can do this, but you can't do that. You can do this, but you shouldn't do that. Uh, would be very silly, and it is a limitation, and what I stated earlier, limitations do just that. They limit you. Um, going into weightlifting is like going into karate. Um, you walk in the door wanting to learn about karate, they don't immediately slap you with a black belt. You have to start out, and I don't know the colors of the belts, but you start out at certain colors and you earn your way up to a black belt. Well, in weightlifting, you don't walk into a, a, a a gym or a weight room and say, hey, I'm going to lift like that guy lifts. Uh, you have to earn that. Uh, you have to prepare yourself in such a way that you can lift the weight that you're going to have and, and lift it in, uh, with a proper technique. Um, now, the key, maybe even more over technique, is being able to handle the weight. If you can't handle the weight, uh, then technique becomes very vital. But intelligence would say that if I can't handle the weight, I shouldn't pick it up because if I can't handle the weight, that indeed could be what causes an injury. Uh, when I was in uh, 
you know, uh, what got me uh, most recently about this was I heard a topic of is weightlifting bad for baseball? And they showed a, a young man on a bench press, and as he was getting ready to lift this incredible amount of weight, uh, obviously there wasn't a collar on the on the the end of the weights. And when he lifted, and one arm got a little bit weaker, and the weight started to slide off. And as they started to slide off, it kind of fell to the side, and then the frame was advanced to the next slide, and it says that's all it needs to be said about weightlifting. And it bothered me in a great way that. It didn't say that weightlifting is bad. It said that you can't be a dumbass while lifting weights. You should have intelligence as part of the equation. So, you know, here, you know, intelligence and preparation are the keys. And balance, lifting uh, in a balanced manner, must occur. Uh, an imbalance will promote an injury. So I got a little equation here for the whole uh, balance aspect. And that is, you know, using a donkey here, uh, the simple equation is dumbass equals steroids. Steroids equals a quick fix. Quick fix equals injury. Injury equals lifting more than you're capable of. And lifting more than you're capable of equals a quick fix. And a quick fix equals dumbass. That little circle of dumbassness, okay? Uh, weightlifting equals dumbass equals very bad for pitching. But weightlifting plus preparation plus intelligence is very good for pitching. It's very good for advancing uh, in this uh, athletic world, advancing uh, in your health. Preparation and intelligence. Another aspect, you know, when you're looking at um, the high injury rate, uh, you want to look at not only Little League, but all leagues. But uh, having a daughter that plays uh, softball uh, and watching the craziness of uh, tournaments being played, both softball and baseball-wise, uh, back in the day, uh, a tournament for us was a four-team round robin. Now you go to a tournament and you'll see 60 to 70 teams out there, and they're playing baseball one game after the other on the multiple diamonds. And through this process, if one game gets out of whack, it messes up the time frame and now these kids are rushing here and there and and you need to really look that do injuries occur through a lack of preparation you know how often do we spend time watching these young men and asking ourselves or our players the prep time they place in their preparation once we uh... and here's a, here's an instance Okay, uh, the game, uh, we always give uh, the pitcher enough time to get loose. Maybe 15 minutes, he starts warming up down the line. The other kids start scrambling, finishing off their hot dogs and whatnot. Uh, they hop up, uh, grab their uh, bats and they go down with the uh, hitting coach and they hit in the right field corner. And then when game time comes, you know, they're played a little catch. The right fielder, not making a high velocity throw, gets that ball hit out to him and while making a throw into the diamond hurts his arm. Now we can say that that tournament playing in all those games was the cause of the pre but what about the preparation? What about the proper warm-up? Or even deeper, what about the length of time that young man spent preparing for that tournament, preparing for that type of activity? These things have to factor in before we start going all wacko with this high number of Tommy John's or high number of arm surgeries at 700 percent. Well, they're going to go up unless we can truly take care of the preparation part. One other thing that uh, uh, plays a, a big part in this is that um, if you think about it, uh, the people that, uh, I, I was given a pyramid, there are a lot of people playing the game of baseball. When you look at uh, this pyramid, if you want to say the top of this pyramid it are our major leaguers. Okay? And at the bottom of this pyramid it represents all the young men that are playing the game of baseball. Uh, from Little League you, you would say there are 7.5 million baseball players out there. 
and of those 7.5 million, 750,000 are going to go up to the next level, find that they really like playing and they're going to play in the high school level. And then you're going to see about 75,000 move on to the collegiate ranks, okay? And then from 75,000, 7,500 will be uh, into, go into professional baseball, uh, minor league baseball. And then you got 750 of these at the top our current major leaguers. Well, if that's how it comes up, if, if truly making it to the big leagues is that difficult, then we have to look at the whole number of why, when you talk about injuries, the ones that are at the top obviously have a great love for the game and through breaks and through skill have continued to play the game. The ones at the bottom either find that their skill level doesn't take them that way they could find that really they don't love the game in such a way that they put all that they have into it, all the preparation. Then when you get guys moving up this and they keep falling off, what about the ones that eventually make it to the top, that love the game, that play catch a great deal, that find their time in the weight room and they spend a lot of time getting stronger, preparing their bodies for this dream of making it to the big leagues, doing things without no limitations. And then think of the guys that didn't make it, that maybe didn't have the love, maybe didn't have it. Now those guys, how many of those guys are getting hurt? How many of those guys are getting hurt because they didn't put in the time to prepare? They didn't put in the time to get stronger? They didn't take the time, maybe Call of Duty took a majority of their time and baseball was a hobby. If we're, at, as baseball coaches, at, I mean, me, I mean, I can tell you right now, my goal is to produce kids to that avenue of uh, professional baseball. So in doing so, I need guys that love the game. I can't make a future uh, business owner or a car salesman into a big leaguer unless that is all that he wants to do. And, granted, he has to have the ability, he has to have the inner desire, he has to have the love that will provide that avenue. That, uh, now, there are people out there that simply play the game, they might be playing it for mom and dad. Now, when these guys get hurt, why do they become part of the number? That bigger number down there at the bottom, if they're not preparing, they're not putting in the time, but yet they're getting hurt, why are those numbers now causing this little panic or this... A cautionary flag that pitching or throwing or lifting or uh, all these things are very bad and truly the great ones really have to survive all our limitations that we place on players and fortunately they're good enough that maybe they don't get the instruction that the marginal player is and they kind of find themselves just sifting through without these limitations and becoming great. I guess in the last four minutes here, uh, I've tried to touch on probably the most important factor, the love that produces and why do we let people that treat baseball as a hobby and end up getting hurt because of their lack of preparation, why do we let those numbers uh, deter us or make us very cautious in our approach for greatness? Uh, well, I don't have to go through this, but, uh, you know, well, I will. There are five uh, P's. Obviously, everybody knows that perfect practice prevents poor performance. Then you go to six P's, and you can say, well, perfect practice prevents piss-poor performance. I understand that uh, someone in the military background added that to it. Uh, now you get the seven P's, that prior proper preparation prevents piss-poor performance. Well, I've got the ten P's plus an I, okay, and that being... Prior proper preparation precedes perfect practice preventing piss poor pitching injuries. Also, love allows for proper preparation. It allows for the work ethic that precedes practice. The love makes it perfect. And in doing those, can it prevent pitching injuries?